Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Wrestling. Our exploration of the sport continues. This time we're going to talk a little catch wrestling, a little pro wrestling, a little MMA with uh, one of uh, MMA's heroes. And I'm talking about the 2002 UFC heavyweight champ. He joins us now, does the war master, Josh Barnett. Josh, how are you? Doing well this morning, Scott. Let's talk a bit about 2002 because that win came over... Uh, Randy Couture. It was a win by a TKO win. Uh, first of all, what did it feel like at that point and time to become the UFC champ? It felt like a culmination of a, of a dream at that point, not to mention uh, somewhat prophetic in, in that one of my, my old uh, training partners over in Montana when I was first starting out at Jim Harrison's uh, Bushido Khan Karate Studio. Uh, I said that my goal was to be in the UFC by the time I make it to 24. And I was 19 at the time. He says, by the time you're 24, you'll be winning the UFC. So uh, I turned 24 years old and went out there and, and won the, the UFC heavyweight title. And uh, over in a, a fellow Washingtonian at that. So uh, it, was, it was a pretty amazing experience. Yeah, I guess that was going to be my, my next question. I mean, Another guy from Washington, another wrestler. Uh, what was your relationship with him prior to the fight, and what has it been since? Uh, you know, I had always got along just fine with Randy, and in fact, he was training with Maurice Smith, uh, another Washington State UFC champion, um, up at, at Maurice's academy, and I would also uh, train there as well as AMC Pancreation since there was a, a long history and relationship between the two so it'd be good to go in and get some stand-up work with Maurice and, and I, I, Randy felt the same uh, not to mention back in two, those early 2000s and even before that uh, Maurice Smith was one of the first professional fighters to really take the strength and conditioning aspect of the game very seriously and he went to a, a place of, I don't remember the name of it but it was up there in the east side of uh, Lake Washington and it was called the Performance Institute or something like that and you know they had all kinds of protocols that they would put people through and neuromuscular training and it was a really complex system but Maurice really believed in that and so Randy was was uh, was doing strength conditioning training there at the, at the Institute training his stand-up with Maurice and so since I was around we would grapple and train together and you know I was a wrestler as well so uh, any chance that we could pummel on the feet and everything as he was a Greco guy and you know exchange techniques so I always had a really good relationship with Randy and uh, helped him train some uh, as part of his uh, camp against Pedro Hizzo but uh, you know in the end there can only be one to quote Highlander and uh, you got to get out there and fight right yeah by the way fans uh, this is uh and a bit of a departure for us. Uh, we are actually doing this interview. Josh is at a Starbucks. Uh, we're not going to tell you what city uh, for <laughs> reasons of privacy. And oh, it's fine. It's uh, it's a Starbucks in Fullerton because I'm literally two two blocks down the street, three blocks down the street from the gym I train at, Combat Submission Wrestling in, uh, in Fullerton, California. And as soon as I get done with this interview, I'm heading to the gym to train. Uh, not only myself, but my athletes that I work with. So uh, I have to uh, uh, ask for a bit of forgiveness for the noise. All right, let's talk a bit about um, uh, the UFC today, and then we'll move on to a couple other topics. UFC today, uh, i got to ask you, do, do athletes owe it to the promotion to promote, um, to promote events, to promote fights? Uh, it seems to me there, there's a bit of a differing of opinion between um, uh, some fighters today and uh, perhaps uh, the way you know it used to be done. What are your thoughts? Well, for one thing, the way it used to be done didn't require the same amount of effort towards promotional, uh, uh, the promotional side of things because, hell, we didn't have people wanting to talk to us. There, there wasn't the interest there. There wasn't uh, the other, a lot of these mainstream uh, sports outlets had no interest. Uh, to talk to any of us fighters. Uh, so with the increased popularity, and to be honest, with the more uh, acceptance of mixed martial artists as serious athletes, 
comes uh, with that more of the well, the uh, uh, some sometimes the the difficulty of having to be a part of that mainstream media blitz, that sort of uh, PR machine stuff that is actually quite important to try and uh, educate, but as well as uh, capture the attention of any potential viewers, and, and even more importantly, potential new viewers uh, to what it is that we do. So there is a responsibility as a professional athlete to go out there and do it. As an amateur athlete, no, I would say there's, there's really no responsibility to that. Uh, but as a professional, yes, and it's only serving you as well to a degree, but I would also say that as an athlete, I would not do anything that I feel would jeopardize uh, my ability to be at my best. So there's a line there that you're just going to have to weigh and you hope uh, be able to work out amicably with, with any promotion that you're dealing with and still be able to get in you know, quality time pumping up your event uh, without causing any negative aspect to your own uh, preparation. We're talking with Josh Barnett, uh, the 2004 King of Pancras, uh, is a no-gi black belt champ of the world. This is a dangerous man. I, I mean, the nickname War Master is, is cool, but to know that he can actually throw down with the best in the world, I guess would lead us to the next question is, when is that next fight? I don't have anything scheduled at the moment, but uh, I'm, a bit, I'm in a bit of a holding pattern for a next bout. Uh, being is that the UFC has uh, uh, more specific plans about how and who they want me to fight. So uh, while while that means that I can't just be thrust into the, the nearest uh, appropriate card and just thrown into a bout, uh, it also means that uh, whenever it is that I, I'm able to work out something with the UFC to get back in the cage, uh, it means that it's going to be a big fight. Do you know who you would like to fight? Who would you like to go up against? Uh, I don't know who I would fight necessarily, but as far as liking to fight, you know, pretty much anybody that's willing to show up, uh, to be perfectly honest. Uh, sometimes that, that can be a, a difficult thing to make happen. Well, there's a whole lot of fans out there that would love to see you on a card, so we hope the UFC has something big planned, and we hope that that person can absolutely stand and deliver. Uh, we're talking to uh, a, a guy that has absolutely reinvented himself, at least he's a uh, unabashed pro wrestling fan, uh, as I am, as is Jim Ross, and you get the pleasure of working with Jim Ross in uh, New Japan uh, Pro Wrestling. Talk to us a little bit about how that came about. Well, uh, to begin with, uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling and Axis, I guess, have been working on developing a uh, North American English variant of their World Pro Wrestling shows uh, from Japan. And I was top of the, uh, the list as a person to bring in as a, as a color commentary guy, since really there's any, nobody else out there with the same amount of experience with professional wrestling, specifically with New Japan Pro Wrestling, where, where I have spent most of my years in the professional wrestling business and uh, with the uh, all the experiences and uh, uh, knowledge of those wrestlers intimately at times as I've even uh, trained some of them and worked out with a lot of them over the years uh, and they paired me up with the fantastic Mauro Ranallo and the show really took off well it took off so well that the WWE decided that they wanted to uh, see if Mauro Ronaldo could do, help do the same thing for their product and it managed to, to snatch him away from us and uh, while it's a pretty awesome opportunity for Mauro and uh, it really speaks to his abilities it left us with uh, an opening needing to be filled and you know, with no small shoes at that so luckily enough Jim Ross was available and, and willing and wanting to come in and uh, sit in alongside with me and continue to take this New Japan Pro Wrestling product uh, out there to the world and really showcase the best wrestling in the world to the American audience now. When uh, Jim performs, and make no mistake, uh, when he's working with a microphone, Jim is performing. He's at the top of his game always. He brings it. It's got to be an awful lot of fun. Oh, it's a it's a blast, and I've known him for years. Uh, I got to meet him through my relationships at the WWE before 
with some of the wrestlers I, I've worked with and uh, uh, some of the relationships I have with some of the talent over there. So, uh, you know, it's, it's really not surprising in any way that uh, a lot of the folks that work in the professional wrestling business are, are very aware uh, of what goes on in the, the fight industry. And uh, so with myself uh, as also being a professional wrestler, um, you know, I was already apparently quite known to some of the people over there. And, uh, you know, hey, I'm a huge professional wrestling fan, and I believe it is part of the roots of, of, of what prize fighting is and, and, and will be for, uh, for the modern age and, and from, from prior. So from pro wrestling, and professional fighting, we find ourselves back at really the beginning of what uh, pro wrestling started as, and that was catch wrestling. Um, you have uh, uh, an affection for catch, uh, catch wrestling, or scientific wrestling, as some would call it. Uh, as a matter of fact, it is a sport in and of itself, but there are variations that you see uh, pop up still to this day in a lot of uh, professional wrestling. Let's talk about pin or submit scientific wrestling. Let's talk a bit about that. How did you uh, become involved? Well, I've been working with Jake Shannon for a long time uh, at scientificwrestling.com. Uh, I've released some instructionals through him, and uh, I, and I brought Billy Robinson, uh, my coach from Japan, uh, over to Jake because I felt that there was a great opportunity there for, uh, for Billy's material to be to be brought to a bigger audience, and I felt like Jake was the perfect guy for that, and you know, a really wonderful thing uh, came of that that relationship, and, and while Billy has passed away, uh, we'd still like to try and be able to bring the best of wrestling, and, and when I say wrestling, I'm putting Catch as Catch Can with that. Uh, to the masses out there and to, to try and bring what we believe so 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 highly of uh, to the masses and, and you know I understand that catch wrestling is, is a bit of a seems esoteric to some or, or you know feels like something of a bygone era but you know one time if you were a professional wrestler you would be competing as catch wrestling bouts and and that was the, the pinnacle that you could achieve as a wrestler. You know, your Frank Gotches, your Farmer Burns, your Carl Gotches, uh, uh, Valdex Sabisco. I mean, these matches would happen all over the world and sell out arenas um, to go see the best men in the world match up, uh, hold for hold. Some of those guys uh, were involved with matches that would last an hour, hour and 30 minutes or longer. Um, once in a while in pro wrestling, I don't think I've, it's been a while since I've seen a an Iron Man match where the you know the scheduled time limit of one hour or thereabouts. Uh, you know, it's, so it it kind of uh, there's a bit of uh, there's a bit of love on my part as well. And then to see where you've teamed up with a, a great friend of ours. And by the way, today's interview brought to you in part by our friends at Punch Drunk Gamer. Uh, he made me aware of your relationship and uh, coming up your partnership with Wade Chalice. Um, you said, uh, well maybe Wade said, he jumped at the chance to be able to work with you. So coming up on the third of, uh, well, I guess it's 6-3, right? Oh, uh, I believe so. You yeah. know, I'm not the best at schedules. I have to always <laughs> put that stuff right in front of me. But I'm glad that Wade was willing to jump. That means his knees are still pretty good. <laughs> his knees are good. He's uh, in the Guinness World Book of Records, has uh, uh, the, the best pinner, uh, has the most pins, most wins uh, in both categories. Uh, it's an amazingly large number of his wins have been by pins, and the guy can absolutely go. Uh, so coming up in Los Angeles, and by the way, fans, you can go online to scientificwrestling.com and check out the dates for the camps because there's camps in LA. There's camps in Denver, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Doncaster, and that's UK, and London, UK. You can be a part of it. It's hours and hours of hands-on attention from the coaches, uh, training camp attendees. Uh, we'll get uh, you know some pretty cool stuff to sign and verified scientific wrestling certificate, uh, free lifetime membership to scientificwrestling.com. Uh, the Syllabus DVD, which features Billy Robinson, 
the Punisher DVD starring Wade Chalice, uh, Attack in the Guard starring Josh Barnett. Uh, right there, it's like uh, two two hundred fifty dollar value, just that. But uh, you, you can also be accredited, uh, and and that's through Scientific Wrestling. So, what can fans expect on the mat? I mean, how does how does how does it work? Because we're talking for some, what you know, for some it might be kind of foreign. No, uh, and that's true. Uh, we there is no uh, restriction in terms of experience level. Uh, or ability, uh, you know, because it's it's most important to, to bring the ideas and the techniques out there to people more than it is to try and uh, necessarily hone the next level of competitive athlete with these types of seminars. Because you know, the, the a world champion can go in here and and find a thing that's gonna maybe take them to a level they've never been to or on a, on a methodology uh, to their training. That can, that can really cement their status and their legacy. Just as much as a complete beginner could get on the mat, you know, really struggle with with uh, with the techniques necessarily as it being foreign to them, but the same thing of introduction of ideology and philosophy uh, behind why we're doing things and the method to all of this you know, can really start them on the right path. And, uh, you know, really any journey is really about just taking one step and, and putting another foot in front of each other. So. Uh, it could be a great uh, leap off, a great starting point for a person as well. And uh, you know, I've heard nothing but great things about Wade's teaching ability, uh, which is you know, nothing, nothing surprising to me for a man with such a great competitive uh, uh, pedigree. You know, I mean, being the number one pinner of all time is is an impressive feat. In, in, in the sport of wrestling, especially because it's a pretty difficult feat to pin people at a high level in college and in the world level. But uh, I mean, think about it. You know, pinning your opponent is a is the definite be all end all. You can beat a guy by points. You stick him on his shoulders. That's it. You know, that's the end of the line, and, and that is the the ultimate win in the sport of wrestling. And so, uh, a lot of what Wade teaches even from the strictly amateur background, is all foundation and a part of submission. And all of, all of that type of technique, all of that, that wrestling knowledge he has completely blends in, helps, and uh, uh, it, it, uh, it really bolsters your ability to be a great submission wrestler and helps if you want to be, uh, if you're even a, an aspiring MMA fighter. You know, all of that stuff is a, is a massive help to your game. I mean, if you can hold and ride a person uh, after you, you score that takedown, you know, it's going to be real difficult for them to try and get back to their feet and, and escape to uh, to fight from an open open space. You know, let's say that they're a, a kick a striker of some sort. If they're a grappler, but they can never establish a good foundation, can never be on top, and can never really get competent hand or head control. It's going to be pretty tough for them to work a really great submission game against you as well. And you know, uh, I, I'm a real firm believer in the pinning aspect of wrestling being effective as a combat technique as well. Mm. June 3rd through the 5th, Los Angeles, California. That's the first pin and submit uh, training camp for 2016. Learn from uh, two great guys. First of all, Josh Barnett, the War Master, uh, with his uh, uh, varying pedigree as well. It's been a tremendous opportunity to watch you grow as an athlete over the years and to know that you still are ready, willing, and able uh, to hang with uh, whoever the UFC wants to put in front of you. Fans want to see it. Uh, gosh knows I want to see it. Mauro Ranallo wants to see it. Uh, you know Jim Ross will be there as well. Uh, Wade Chalice would love to see it. Matter of fact, I can't wait to see the video that will come out of this very first uh, training camp, the Pin and Summit training camp in Los Angeles. Fans, you can be a part of it. Check it out online. Right now you can save uh, 600 bucks. That's 40% discount if you sign up now. Regular price is 1500 bucks. Price today, right now, $900. And, of course, we're talking about Pin or Submit, the sport of catch wrestling. Look for it online. Our guest today has been courtesy of our friends at Punch Drunk Gamer, David Carpinello and company. Thank you so very much. Uh, instructional DVDs are all available online. And uh, what is, you, you say you're going to train today, you're going to train your athletes today. What is, uh, 
what, 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 what's on tap for uh, your athletes today? Well, today is uh, mainly a sparring day uh, over at CSW, so there'll be a lot of uh, uh, drills in preparation for sparring, uh, some some easy grappling, uh, flowing, uh, some drills of you know incorporating things like takedowns against uh, strikes or uh, you know, maybe some uh, some control work on top, just something to get them all warmed up, ready to go, uh, not just physically but mentally as well. And then they'll get in there, they'll get in some hard rounds. And then I'll usually make them drill uh, one or two things, you know, not overload the, uh, the the circuit board at the end of practice. And often that'll have to do with something that I saw uh, during training and try to either reinforce uh, something they were doing or something we've been working on or to make a add a correction to something that was happening out there. Josh, how can fans reach out to you? Oh, easy enough. Uh, I have a Facebook fan page, which is uh, simply uh, Josh Barnett. Uh, I have uh, a Twitter and Instagram account, which is at Josh L. Barnett, um, which I, I run all of these things. So uh, while I do get a lot of messages and I'm not always able to respond to everything, uh, I do try to keep up uh, with, uh, with all the fans that contact me. And it's, it's also my outlet to try and uh, keep people abreast of all the different stuff that we're doing with New Japan Pro Wrestling on access with uh, the pin and submit seminars that we're doing here and even like the uh, California Catch Wrestling a tourn tournament at Brea High School on May 7th that uh, myself and uh, Fergus McTaggart of Brea High School Wrestling are running. Very good. Well, Josh, I knew it was going to be good. Carpinello knew it was going to be a good interview and uh, it's, uh, it's, it seems like something that should have happened an awful long time ago, but it, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you today, and we appreciate you going to the effort of the Starbucks. I thought, uh, you know what, neat touch. Can I get a, a large caramel uh, latte? No foam, please. Just a sprinkle of cinnamon. Sure enough. Not a problem here. Don't, don't uh, think that Starbucks and its access to caffeine has not played a healthy role in my life. <laughs> Josh, thanks for the time today, man. We're going to look for you uh, and Wade Chalice. The three-day scientific wrestling pin and submit training camp comes up uh, June 3rd, and uh, you'll want to be there for it. Make sure you get it, your registration done today. Uh, again, look for it online, scientificwrestling.com. Appreciate the time, bud. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I hope to see you guys there. For Punch Drunk Gamer, I'm Scott Casper for Takedown Wrestling as well. Appreciate the opportunity to go one-on-one -on -one with the War Master, Josh Barnett. Thanks for watching.